welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am Courtney Anderson. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this show is part of our Law Lovers Lounge series. And of course, our Law Lovers Lounge is inspired by, dedicated to, and just for those of us who love law. And it's a lounge, so it's a relaxing place where we have sort of general, broad, uh, educational discussions about uh, areas of legal discussion. And this, again, has to always have the disclaimer that although I am an attorney, I'm a lawyer in the U.S., uh, I am not your lawyer by virtue of you taking part in uh, listening to and and, um, accessing this program. This is just provided uh, for educational uh, purposes to the public. Uh, Again, I'm Courtney Anderson, and I do have a law firm uh, website at litigation mitigation. Dot com if you have any specific legal questions or concerns uh, that you would like to contact my law firm. And, of course, if you have any other just sort of general issues um, for me or about the show, you can always reach me at CourtneyAnderson.com, CourtneyAnderson.com. So here we are, again, talking about law. I love this lounge. Exciting. And this is a topic that is one I certainly have spent uh, an incredible amount of time addressing over my legal career and, of course, taking my uh, legal um, skills and experience and also taking that into organizations in terms of applying uh, legal education programs, business uh, management issue uh, analysis, uh, in compliance with legal issues. So our specific show topic today is, I think I am being harassed at work. Am I? How do I know? I think I'm being harassed at work. Am I? How do I know? So this is, wow, an an issue that from the very beginning uh, of when I started uh, practicing law uh, in uh, 1998 uh, up until today is something that I just constantly get asked about. And so let's try and see what we can do to understand some of the big picture of this. Now, again, I am a lawyer, and there are a whole bunch of rules about what lawyers can do and and, and where they can do it. It sounds kind of odd, but there's uh, licensing and jurisdictional requirements, and there there are different types of laws in different cities and different counties and different states and different nations and different um, uh, international alliances. So there's no possible way in, in any episode or even one program that all the laws uh, in the world could be addressed. And again, um, I am doing everything I can to give a uh, an educational overview, um, but I'm not able to answer your specific legal questions because I don't know where in the world you are. I don't know what laws specifically apply about uh, your workplace harassment um, issues in your jurisdiction. And I, you know, I don't have all that. The it, who does have all of that will be a lawyer in your jurisdiction. Uh, that can that you can talk to about the specifics of your case. Yet, in our program, we can give you a good overview of sort of very broadly what is harassment and, and what might be something that might make you think that, that you might uh, need to talk to somebody. So, again, um, I can't tell you what's happening specifically where you live right now or where you work right now uh, in your part of the world with all of, all of the uh, specific legal processes. But we can start to answer these generic sort of broad questions, uh, which our show is, you know, I think I'm being harassed at work. Am I? How do I know? So the first part of the answer is based on feelings. It's all about feelings. Okay, so when somebody says to me they think they're being harassed at work, the question actually tells me a lot. If you we're not being harassed. Most likely, you wouldn't ask the question. You wouldn't say, I think I'm being harassed. Typically, when people use language like that uh, at work or even in a personal relationship, so they'll say something like, um, you know, I think, you know, my spouse, you know, maybe maybe cheating on me. Usually that means there's something that's happened that makes them say that. 
That's all I'm saying. It's, it's, it, that that sort of sentiment is is usually correlated to some sort of sort of action. Something's happened. That's why you're saying it. it. You wouldn't say that if nothing had happened. So what I'm saying is, just because something's happened, does that mean your spouse is cheating on you? No. It just means that you have some suspicion and you have a reason for the suspicion. You don't. People just don't randomly wake up every single day and say, "I think my spouse is cheating on me," unless you just have constant, you know, new things that make you think that. And it's the same thing at work. And what I'm arguing is that people who, who usually aren't being harassed, um, they don't even think. The thought doesn't enter their head, I think, I, I think I'm being harassed. Um, although, there are some people who actually are being harassed and are unaware of it, just like there are people who are being cheated on, cheated on by their spouse, and, they don't, and they're not aware of it. So, but if you think you might be experiencing harassment at work, then where there's smoke, there's fire. And what I'm saying is the fact that you even thought that means you need to pursue it further. So doesn't mean it's conclusive. It just means that, hey, you definitely do need to think about it, and there may be something uh, that, that's going on. And so that's what I'm making the point. If you have that feeling, don't ignore the feeling, right? So if somebody's at home thinking, I think my spouse is cheating on me, don't ignore the feeling. You know, talk to them. Start to see if you're just being irrational or something, you know, is happening. Uh, same thing at work. Don't ignore the feeling. If you think you might be harassed, okay, let's pursue that then. Who do we talk to? Well, let's let's start talking about that. Okay, so why do you think you're being harassed at work? All right, so when I said it's about feelings, something has usually happened to make you think you're being harassed, right? So somebody might have said something or they might have done something, and that may have triggered this idea that you have where you where you say, I think I may be you know, harassed at work. All right, think back to whatever was said or was done, right? So it doesn't have to be, that again, that somebody said something. Maybe somebody, you know, looked and looked at you in a certain way. Or maybe somebody didn't say something when they said something about everybody else, right? So maybe the absence of any words um, specifically in a certain context ha- has you thinking you might be uh, up experiencing harassment, right? So if you're in a situation where every single person in your group, you know, was publicly um, complimented for something and you're the only one in the room that wasn't, then, you you know, even though it was an absence of, of, of words, that says something. So how do you feel? Think about the thing that was said or not said or the thing that was done or not done, right? How do you feel about it? Not not what you want me to think you feel, but what do you really feel? What did you really feel when it happened? Because remember, I said I just said at the you know just a few minutes ago that that don't ignore these feelings. Like you get the, you so you have the feeling for a reason. Like you're, you're, the feeling and the sentiment is I think I might be you know I think I might be experiencing harassment. I think I'm being harassed. Why are you thinking that? Well, what happened? Don't start to try to diminish it. In other words, okay. So uh, you're you're saying I think I I think I'm being harassed at work, and then I'd say to you if we were uh, sitting somewhere in real life okay, well, you know, why do you think that? Did something happen? Somebody say something or do something? And then this is what people will say in real life. They'll say things like, well, I'm probably just being too sensitive. And, you know, people always tell me I make a big deal out of, you know, little things. And, you know, I I don't want anybody to get in trouble. And I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, complaining. Okay, all of that stuff, all of that sort of, uh, uh, is all useless. All it is is you trying to, I think what you're trying to do is, um, I think you're trying to make yourself feel better, right? So it, it, I'd, I'd rather think that I'm not being harassed and I'm just being too sensitive or I'm weird or, um, you know, maybe I'm just being a bit of a baby or, you know, I, because the fact of being harassed is, is much worse in many people's minds than, than just maybe some misunderstanding or something of that nature. So I think that's part of it. And I think the other part of it is um, you're, de- you're denying your own experience and you're disrespecting yourself. And all of all the programs that I provide, all of the professional services and things that I do as a, as a, you know, as a lawyer, as a uh, consultant, as a, even as a professor, my goodness, um, it's all about respect, respect for yourself, and then hopefully tying that into making uh, choices that help you surpass your goals, and that also, as you make your choices that are uh, that are professionally related, that you're joyful um, as you're as you're uh, 
experiencing these these work um, you know events in your life and so if you diminish your value by basically trying to say that you felt something but you don't want to you don't want to give it equal validity so that's why you're sitting there and you know and saying oh well I might be just too sensitive or everybody always tells me I make a big deal who cares and none of and, and all you're doing is diminishing the value of your feelings which to me is is disrespectful and um and it's also useless because you're not even getting to the content I don't I don't want to hear all these excuses um you have the absolute right to feel You have the absolute right to feel whatever you feel. And I'm, and I'm arguing you have the absolute right because you are a, alive. And so if you feel it, then okay. Don't deny that you feel it. Don't diminish your feelings. Don't, don't do any of that. Don't, just, don't disrespect yourself. Now, do we feel things sometimes that it turns out later when we get the full picture of what happened or more facts that we were incorrect in our analysis? Yeah, that happens all the time. But that doesn't mean that I start diminishing my own value in my own mind with all this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm too sensitive and I don't want to make a big deal. Stop what happened. What did the person say or not say? What did they do or not do? Because all this other stuff is useless, and it also is a barrier to what prevents actual harassment um, from being addressed. I've done a lot of different programs on people who, uh, how do you handle people at work who are uh, intentionally trying to, you know, insult you or um, be abusive. I talk, I've talked a lot in that about you have to have, uh, and I encourage you to listen to those programs about uh, emotional uh, self-defense programs, just like you have know, physical self defense, right, where you learn how to defend yourself if someone tried to, you know, take your, your, your wallet or something, that you'd have emotional self defense and that there are people out in the world, all over the world and in workplaces who are intentionally they're predators. They want to inflict misery and pain. That's sort of what makes them feel better, I guess. I don't you know, it's their 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 emotions are a little bit different than most people's, but they, they want to and they derive some sense of pleasure from inflicting pain. So if you're dealing with that, then you've got somebody that has a very clear agenda. And then if you sit there and you waste a lot of time and resources trying to devalue your own feelings, it's just it's so counterproductive. And it also is playing right into the narrative of being a victim. That's just silly. You may actually be, you know, um, being oversensitive. You may have misunderstood what happened. We'll find out later. But right now, if you feel something and you suspect and you think, hey, then that means we need to get a, we need to get moving. Like I said at the beginning, don't ignore your own feelings. Don't dismiss, dismiss your feeling. You might look into it and realize, oh, I was totally wrong. Uh-oh, you know, apologize or whatever. You, if you don't need to apologize because you didn't, you know, um, offend anyone, then just take it as a lesson and keep going. We all have the right to feel. You have the right to feel. So whatever it is that happened or didn't happen, or was said or not said, then you need to go ahead and get to that and stop with all this other garbage about, um, you know, you, you don't want to make a big deal and people tell you you're too sensitive and all. Just, just be quiet. You're you, and you have the right to feel, and you felt something. That's why, you, that's why this idea and this sentiment came to you that I think you're, I'm being harassed. So own it. Own it. So what happened? Because you're saying you think you're being harassed, but you're not sure. How do you know? Okay, well, I can't begin to even figure out <laughs> – if we're how to be sure unless we start talking about what happened. Okay. Again, this is some basic things, and I, I touched on some of that other program about, you know, uh, somebody intentionally uh, trying to offend you or hurt you at work emotionally. Um, it is imperative that you own your feelings and you listen to them because that little voice inside of you is often accurate. Now, it, it sometimes makes a mistake because it doesn't totally understand what's happening, but it's an, it's an indicator. It's sort of a warning sign. It's part of your self-defense. So whenever the little idea comes up, I think I'm being harassed. Wait a minute. Is that right? Um, that's a good thing because it's your own body and your own um, self-defenses and alertness uh, sort of jumping into action. Now, sometimes it'll be a false alarm, but it's still good that it went off, and it's really good when, when you hear it going off that you do something. That's what I've been saying. Right, it's like you're in somewhere and you hear the smoke detector go off. You know the alarm is going off. You don't know if there's a fire because you can't smell or see any fire. You might walk around and see where the smoke detector is going off and re realize that, oh, okay, there's there's not a fire. Um, it was just a you know uh, going off because of a short circuit or whatever. Um, but 
you need to go look and see. You don't just sit there and think, oh, I'm sure there's not a fire. I'm being too sensitive or too, you know, silly. And then while you're sitting there, there's a huge fire. And by the time you realize that there's a fire, you know, you're choking on, you know, and have smoke inhalation and, and your life is at risk. So get up and go investigate and see what's going on. So that's what we're doing, right? I think I'm being harassed. What is going on? Okay. So at this point in real life, people tell me, usually haltingly, because it's weird. Even though the person thinks they're being harassed, they're like embarrassed to say what it is that happened or didn't happen, which is weird because you're the one that might potentially be um, be the victim. So why are you the one that's embarrassed? But I, it's pretty consistent. People are like, oh, well, um, here's, you know, what happened. And sometimes people t- say something and they'll, they'll – They'll say their story of what they, you know, they think might be harassment, but the reality is that it's totally based on what they think somebody might do and not what someone actually has done. What I mean is this. When you ask yourself if you think you're being harassed but you're not sure is when you start to think about what the, what happened, right? So go back to what was said or not said or done or not done. Did it actually happen or is it something that you think is going to happen or that you fear will happen? So if I, if you, if it's, a situation where you say to me, hey, um, yeah, I was in a meeting and, you know, the manager said to everybody in the room, you know, really great compliments, you know, said to Fred, he was wonderful about being, you know, early all the time and then told Jan that she really was, you know, great with that last customer that she helped, uh, you know, even though the customer was a little, you know, demanding. Um, and then I'm thinking, oh, okay. And then I'll say, all right, well, what, you know, the manager didn't say anything. They just ignored you even though everybody was in the room and everybody else had, you know, a positive comment. And then you'll say to me, oh, no, I got a positive comment. And I, oh, okay, well, well, all right, well, what was your comment? Well, you know, I was just, you know, I, every, he just said that I did, you know, a really good job um, when I revamped um, some of the, the, the paperwork. Um, but, but, you know, I, I don't know why he didn't talk about, you know, my ideas for the budget or why he didn't also mention, you know, some of the things that I worked with other people on because I did help, you know, Jan with that customer too. All right, that is not probably harassment. How do I know? Because, you don't have a, anything that happened to you that was different from what happened to everybody else, and it was work-related. So you're talking about, you know, if if you, in other words, people talking about the job at the job is the purpose of the job. I do a lot of education and training on harassment and, and trying to prevent it and, you know, how to create harassment-free workplace. And the main thing I teach people at work is, you know, if you don't want to have a harassment problem where you're, you know, um, disciplined or even fired for supposedly harassing somebody, then if you know if it's not part of your job, don't do it. Right. So you know that gets rid of all of the the you know the stuff that gets people in trouble. So you know if it's not part of your job, like in your job description. So like if your job you know is, is you're a salesperson, right? Okay, and you're selling uh, real estate. You're selling real estate. Okay, so it's not part of your job then to tell people, you know, your graphic, you know, sexual fantasies. Nope, that's not part of your job. That's not related to real estate. It's not related to your job. Um, then now you potentially have a problem because you're doing something not part of your job. And somebody else could perceive and feel, somebody who could have heard or uh, overheard what you said could have felt that it was in a, that it was unreasonable and it was offensive. Um, and you open all this up and all these problems by saying and doing things that aren't part of work at all and nowhere near. Uh, so all this stuff that gets people in trouble, my 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 technique of it's not part of your job, don't do it, it will get rid of about 99% of that, right? Um, the 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 challenge for somebody who's saying I think I'm being harassed is you have to give me something that's happened that was either um, you were treated differently than other people, right? So if there so literally if there's like eight people in the room and you know seven of them are given praise and and you're standing there and totally ignored that's something that happened you were treated totally different from differently from the other seven people but if you told me that you were given praise just like everybody else but the praise you were given you didn't really like or you know your concern is why wasn't other praise given then you don't have anything that was where you were treated differently in a way that might be harassment or discriminatory so from that alone and coupled with the fact that the person was talking about work it was all about work it was all about the work projects and your work um so I don't, there, I don't see or observe anything in that kind of scenario. It's usually in that type of situation, somebody really is uh, operating from their own heightened expectations of what they think they ideally should be treated like, right? So they want to have a certain type of praise, or why didn't the person give them the biggest 
uh, project. They only got a medium-sized project. That kind of decision is made by the business leadership. And if it's business-related and they're talking about business, then you more likely than not aren't being harassed. Um, if the manager is talking and talking about business and, and says, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give you, you know, the smaller project, not the, not the biggest one this, this quarter. And the reason I'm doing it is because, you know, you're a woman and women are really stupid. You know, my ex-wife is stupid and, you know, I have so many relatives that I hate and they're really stupid. Women are also bad drivers and I just know you're not going to be able to, you know, get these, get these customers treated right. Okay, now you have an issue. Okay, because talking about um, what you do at work that's work-related is what you're supposed to do. So if someone's talking about what you did in terms of how much you sold, what your attendance was, uh, any metric of the job, that's what they're supposed to do. If you don't like what they're saying or you're mad that, you know, that they're not understanding that, you, you know, you're having a bad time in your life and maybe that's why you were late or whatever, that's not harassment or discrimination. That's about business. We're talking about business, talking about what you did. The moment people start talking about who you are, now you may have a situation where you have a harassment or potential uh, problem. So the fact that somebody gender is a certain gender, the fact that their you know, age is a certain age or that they um, may have a disability or that they uh, may be, uh, may be um, a certain uh, ethnic background or national origin, all of this is not related to the job. It's just, it's not what I'm doing at the job. It's instead about who I am. You're not, the decisions are supposed to be made by the laws in most parts of the world, many parts of the world. The decisions at work are supposed to be based on what I'm doing at work. That seems really simple, and it is. And when I train and do education um, programs around the world to my client organizations about these things, it is easy. It took, you know, that, you know, we just did that in like 10 seconds, right? What do you do at work? Make decisions based on what people did at work. Easy. But it, like I said, it, it, it's, it's supposed to be consistent to everybody, and you're not necessarily always going to like it because maybe you weren't on time, and maybe that wasn't your best work product, and maybe you didn't meet your sales expectations last quarter, and maybe, you know, whatever. You didn't get the, you know, the research grants that were anticipated or whatever the decision was that's work-related that's based on what you did there. That's what they can – that's what it's supposed to be talked about. That's what supposed to, decisions are supposed to be made on. Even if you don't like it, that's not anything that you have a uh, harassment claim. Now, if people are making decisions based on who you are, so not what you did, but who you are, right, your gender, your national origin, your color, your religion, all this kind of stuff, now you're talking about something that might potentially be harassment because what is your, your gender or your religion or your uh, national origin or your age have to do with the job, the sales job or the, or the bus driving job or whatever the job is, nothing. And if it's about what you've done at work, then you can you can address that. You can talk about how you can improve on that. You can ask for mentoring and all those types of things. If somebody's argument is it, your gender is your gender and it's just I think people with your gender are stupid, what could you do about that? Nothing. That's why those types of things are illegal. Um, so when you're asking, you know, I think I'm being harassed at work. I'm not sure. What happened? Was it something about work? Well, yeah. Okay. Um, were other people subject to something similar about work? Well, yeah. All right. So you were treated the same consistently with other people, and it was about work. So wh wh what's wrong? I understand you might not like what they said. I understand a lot of people say to me, well, yeah, it was about work and everything, but um, I don't like them, or they don't like me. Okay, get that. But that's not, a, that's not anything that in, anyone can fix. Making people like each other is not the intent of harassment-free uh, laws and anti-bullying. All that, uh, th those laws are trying to stop people literally from physically assaulting and abusing people, committing things that are crimes. They're civil wrongs, civil law, things that you you can be uh, sued for and, and people can seek money against you, but they're also, in most instances, many instances, are also things that are violations of also criminal laws in many parts of the world, right? So if I physically, you know, hit my uh, co-worker in the head, then yeah, I mean, I probably harassed them, right, because it, it, it was um, offensive, it was um, it was in, in intimidating, right? I felt intimidated, right? When they hit me in the head, then um, that's moving toward harassment. If I hit somebody in the head out on the shopping mall, out on my social time, that's a crime. If I hit somebody in the head in my domestic um, family, that's a crime. 
You see? This is the, the test isn't difficult. You don't need a special training class on this or anything. So when you ask yourself, I think I'm being harassed at work, but I'm not sure, if this behavior happened outside of work, would it be harassment or a crime? Would it be wrong? So if somebody hit you in the head outside of work, would it be wrong? Almost everybody will say to me, well, yeah, it's wrong. Unless, of course, your job is that you are an athlete or some sort of person whose job includes people hitting you in the head. And I have client organizations with, you know, athletes and uh, performers who part of it is scripted. There is people, there is a situation where people do hit them in the head, but that's their job. They literally sign up for that and they're paid for that. That's a different type of thing. If it's part of, if it's not part of your job, don't do it. That was part of what I said earlier. So when you're trying to figure out is it harassment, if this thing happened outside of work, what would it be? Would it be wrong? And by just generally, generically wrong, it could be a crime, but you would just know it's wrong. So if somebody came up to you, you know, in the in the in the shopping center, you're you're not at work or just hanging out at the shopping center, socializing or going to purchase something, and some stranger came up to you and was like, um, "I wish you were dead. I think you're ugly, and people like you disgust me. I wish you were dead." Okay, that's a problem, right? It's wrong. If they said something to you like, "I wish you were dead," and I got a, I got my knife, I got my knife in the car, that's a threat. Uh, if they say, I wish you were dead and, you know, I got a bullet, I got a bullet in my gun with your name on it. In many parts of the, it's wrong, it's a crime, and in some jurisdictions it might be what's called a ter- terroristic threat. You're basically threatening to kill somebody. If they did that to you outside of work, then you would know it's wrong. You might not know the name of the specific criminal law. You don't need to know that, but you would know, hey, you're not supposed to tell me that. If you were at the shopping center uh, going to get uh, some groceries and somebody came up to you and pulled their clothes off, and started to uh, rub their genital region against you, you would know that's wrong. Because you're not at that store, you're at a grocery store. It's not a store where you go for people who are supposed to be nude or they're providing uh, you know, sexual uh, type services or they're performing nude. No, it is a store for groceries where it is not a nude store for groceries. It is just a store where everyone is clothed and all you're supposed to be doing is buying groceries. If somebody who works there comes up to you and starts taking their clothes off and rubbing their genitals on you, you don't need to know the name of the specific law, but you know this is wrong. It's the same thing at work. If you think you're being harassed, but you're not sure, first ask yourself, is it, does it have to do with your job? So were they talking about your work performance, and was that real? And if they were consistently doing that with other people, that also shows you potentially that you might be jumping to a conclusion that's inaccurate. Because if everybody was giving the same information, you might not agree with the analysis, but it was about your work then more likely than not, that probably might not be harassment. I mean, it might be that you don't like the manager. It might be that you at some point want to transfer to some other division. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're being harassed or bullied. If the test next is, if this happened outside of work, would it be wrong? Would you want to call for law enforcement or police or help? Would people standing there would be like, oh, my gosh, and immediately get on the phone and call 911, you know, call 911 in the U.S. or 999 or whatever the emergency services number is in whatever part of the world you're in? Then that's a clue. That's, that's a really simple test. And the weird thing for me, uh, you know, is that uh, I have to say the majority of the time when people say to me, I I think I'm being harassed at work, but I'm not sure. How do I know? And then when they get past all that kind of garbage about, well, I don't want to be too sensitive, or people tell me I have a bad sense of humor and I'm not funny, I'll just skip when you get past that garbage, right, which you disrespect yourself and I begged you to stop doing, and you get to telling me what actually happened, and it actually is not about the work, right? So it's something to do with who you are or who they think you are, right? Your 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 gender, your religion, or your age or whatever, which has nothing to do with the job. And um, the last test, how, how, how do I know, is if this happened outside of work, would you consider it wrong? The majority of the time when people give me the details, finally, and they get to the part of the test of outside of work, would it be considered wrong? Of course, it, it's very easy. It's very easy. If you're out at the grocery store, you're out at the market, and uh, somebody comes up to you and uh, says to you, you're the stupidest person I've ever met. Uh, I, I hope that you go home and die tonight, um, you know, and then says an obscenity to you. That some stranger at the store, what? Are you serious? Who did that? That's wrong. Now, is it something that somebody goes to, to you know, to jail forever? 
is it the same as if somebody came and 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 you know hit you or or tried to stab you? Well, no, it's not as serious as a crime, but you still understand it's wrong. It's the same thing at work. It's wrong. Now, does that mean the person is going to have the same uh, punishment for telling you that you're the stupidest person they've ever met and they wish you you know died? No, but they also have to stop doing it. Just like somebody in the public has, would have to stop doing that. You know, if you're at that that marker that store, you you go to you know call the owner. This person just did this. And then most of the time, I mean, you can never come in my store again. I'm going to call the police. And in many parts of the world, you can even go get law enforcement and, and, and get restraining orders where someone can't come to that store because they keep doing that. What is that? You need help. Some parts of the world that you might have to call social services. Maybe somebody has, maybe somebody is suffering from a, a mental, emotional, psychological uh, condition at the time. They need help. But you would recognize it as wrong. It's the same thing at work. So you think you're being harassed. As a refresher, then don't ever ignore the feeling. You might be wrong, but at least investigate and find out, okay? You're not sure, then let's go to the next part of the test. Is it about work, and it was it a, and was it consistent with what other people were experiencing? So if it was evaluations, was everybody else getting an evaluation, and things of that nature, okay. Um, and then the last part is, if this happened outside of work, would it be wrong? Again, you don't need to know the name of the specific law, but you would just feel like or other strangers around you would be like, that's wrong. So physically t touching you, assaulting you, um, you know, sexually abusing you or be behaving in a, in a sexual uh, manner uh, that's offensive, that's inappropriate, that's hostile, that's, that's shocking um, to the conscience. And is it uh, something that you understand the, that the less severe it is and the less um, consistent it, it's happened, right? So if it's only happened one time that they told you that you're the ugliest person they've ever known, then that could be something maybe they get counseled for. And then they, as long as they stop doing it, then the harassment is stopped. The problem is gone. Just go keep going to work and doing what you're doing. They're not saying or doing that thing to you. So leave them alone. They'll leave you alone. Everybody goes about their business. If, if you ignore your feelings where you think you're being harassed and you don't do anything, here's what I am going to guarantee. Then whatever it is, it will continue. So if it's not harassment and it's just that you, you're getting feedback about your job, related to your job, and you don't like it, but you're still going to get the same feedback So you, you know, by ignoring it. But here's the bad, risky part of ignoring it. If, if, if somebody really is saying to you, um, you know, obscenities, threatening you, insulting you, um, you know, assaulting you, and you don't say or do anything to investigate and, and, and try to see if it's potentially a challenge so we can get it stopped, It'll just continue, and it'll escalate. It'll get worse. So people usually will test, you know, how far they can go, and they'll say things, and then when they realize you're not going to do anything to stop them, and that might be going to your human resources and management, um, if you have an ombudsman, you know, your legal department, whatever. But you got to speak up, right? Um, if you don't do anything, then that person who's an abuser, an harasser, a criminal, you know, sometimes will just keep doing the thing because they want to, and nobody's making them stop. So, again... This is an incredibly common question. I hope this has been a somewhat helpful uh, of a generic overview for you to begin to see, should I talk to human resources, my management, my legal department, should I talk to a lawyer or the government agency in my part of the world that, that does these harassment cases? And I gave you the tests, right? So was it consistent? Uh, was it related to your job and about your job? And um, if it happened outside of work, would you think it was wrong? Those are the tests. And if you get some of those showing you that, you hey, this might be something, you got to go talk to someone that has the power potentially to fix it, meaning make the person stop doing it. If you don't go to anybody, then that's a whole different uh, challenge that we need to talk about. Um, but thank you for joining me. As always, you can always come to CourtneyAnderson.com uh, to, to, for more information, and I appreciate you for listening.